Everyone did well, everyone played well. Not one or two players, everyone. And that makes a huge difference. Everyone on the same page. So it was great to be back. 2020 starting off with a bang. Thumbnail. <laughs> it's posing for the thumbnail, guys. Can you see me? I mean, I feel like I'm too far away, but no. It is another podcast. And I've got a lot to talk about. Padre football. There's been so much going on. Right, guys, so yeah. Just before we start this video, I've got to remind you all to like, share, comment, subscribe to the Louise 21 channel. We've got vlogs, we've got podcasts, we've got gaming and everything else in between. Let's roll the intro. See you in a second. Ah, oh, welcome back guys, it's good to be back, back here on the channel, once again, another podcast. First of all, how are you doing? Uh, what have you been up to this weekend? Did you survive the storm and the coronavirus and, yeah, well that's not funny actually, but yeah, did you survive the storm? Because that was crazy. I was in Nottingham this weekend playing power chair football, once again, it was crazy. I mean, more crazy than usual. And... You might have seen my video on it already. So yeah, it's like the third weekend we've been up there this season for nationals because we do we have like five or six weekends over like a six month period where we go up and down to Nottingham and play the league games basically. And the average weekend you would have four games, um, sometimes five to fit in the fixtures. We had five this weekend, three on a Saturday, two on a Sunday because you get to go home early on a Sunday because it's only fair. Um, most people drive up Friday, a lot of my teammates do. Um, we didn't, uh, we don't, because my parents work late Friday, so does my brother. So to drive up there after a whole day, for them, is just not fair. Um, for me, it's calm, but like we never really... Well, we haven't done that for years. And so we got up Saturday morning, um, which is what we did, of course. First game was at 9. At, annoyingly, I had to miss that as a result of not coming up Friday. Um... But yeah, so we got there, having won the first game, they won the first game 2-0 against Norwich, who we beat last week in the regional competition, which is just regional, not national like this is. So we beat them on national level two, like two weeks in a row, well, that was two weeks ago, the, the regionals. So yeah, after, after, you know, after having drawn and won a game at regionals, coming into to this nationals, we were, overall, we were unbeaten. And we remained that way because we won all the games. So yeah, first game Norwich 2-0. And then second game was against Northwest Bees, I think they're called. Yeah, I think that's the name. Teams always change names and rebrand and like fold and then come back as different names and stuff. So anyway, I know most of the players anyway. Similar players, same players from like other teams. Or maybe they were the same team, I don't know. But so anyway, we beat them a comfortable 3-0. I got a goal in that game as well. Played really well. I must say, as a weekend, yeah, the team played well, everyone played well, but personally, I did too, and maybe that helped. It helped that my teammates were, and you know, and maybe I, it helped the team the way I played, or vice versa. I don't know which, like, whether that impacted my playing more or I impacted the team. But I did both. Should Wait, I should, I should turn my chair off before I crash. But yeah, it's off. <laughs> so yeah, 3-0 um, One of the other younger players scored um, Another mate of mine scored I can't remember I think we had, we had a penalty in that game, yeah uh, Definitely was um, And that was pretty straightforward Moved the ball well um, Of course at that point we didn't know that We'd won two games That was great as it is uh, At the beginning of the weekend um, Staff Well, the staff Coaches, our coach said to us, you know, um, go out there and do your best, you know. We want to pick up points this weekend. But, damn. Got a text and kitchen's being destroyed. <laughs> Fine. Um, 
a lot of distractions in my house all the time. Deliveries in and out, things like that, you know. It's crazy. But yeah. I don't know why I keep saying, but yeah. So yeah. Our coach is saying, you know, do your best this weekend. Because we, we had um, another coach step in uh, because our actual coach wasn't too well this weekend. So well, it's like a different coaching style. Um, and one of the other parents was the assistant. Uh, great team, like great. Um, I don't know, like the two of them worked well together because, from one side, you got the calm, like reserved, man of few words approach, and then you got the uh, the more passionate side, the more uh, you know, side to remind us of certain tactics, like when you're on the pitch, you know, that like manage some managers do, you know, they give give you a bit of advice while you're on the pitch, or shout at you, but like. You understand that it's for the good of the team, and you know, I'm used to it in the, the amount of years I've played. And but the like, beginning of this season was very difficult because um, I, I, you probably don't you you might know if you watch my videos because of the loss to the sport and our club, um, our coach obviously. So from then we've been we've been fighting back like as a team, like trying to trying to adapt to the new players, the two younger signings, and the loss of our other player that went to the other team. To another team, um, so we're adapting to different styles, different person playing in the middle. You know, these younger players. So we've got more players as well to juggle. Um, and another coach stepped in, and he was unwell, so he couldn't be there. So another coach stepped in, um, brother of, of uh, one of my teammates actually. Um, funny how it comes full circle. <laughs> it's weird, um, but yeah. So we we took that knowing that you know. We got to fight hard this weekend. Uh, one of our teammate, my teammates, wasn't there, um, so we're missing one person, but still enough players to make a difference. And the amazing thing was, everyone got some goals pretty much. Everyone got a decent amount of playing time. Um, the way this coach worked is that it was more rolling subs. Like you, you might play for a bit, then get subbed off, then get subbed back on later. You know, just to keep things moving, to keep everyone fresh. Because the stamina is a thing we will struggle with, um, compared to physically able athletes, you know, and the focus and staying staying focused during the game, you know. And by the end, the last game Saturday, we're all a bit tired, you know. After you eat, you always feel a bit tired, like a bit sleepy. But um, we we made sure we got enough sugar in our bodies. The younger players had like huge pieces of chocolate cake and ice cream and waffles and all that, you know, which obviously put them like through the roof in terms of awakeness <laughs> like another level you know <laughs> so they were that off their nut on, on sugar and well, I, I, I just stuck to like just eat normally fruit pastels something with sugar in it you know some sort of sugar is always needed like for focus like sweet we normally bring sweets yeah that's not the most like athletic thing to do is it but it keeps you awake and focused, that's it. We are athletes. <laughs> uh, stay away from alcohol. <laughs> Though, that evening I did drink a bit to celebrate. Um, and I can't remember when I scored... My other goal I scored was in the last game. Now, the last game was against a good friend of mine on the other team. Um, Kai, um, if you're watching, what's up, bro? Um, and yeah, I want to talk about that game. Because that was a crazy game, and... He knows it. I know it. Everyone knows it. And if I'm honest, we that's the game of the whole the whole weekend. That's the game we didn't necessarily play our best at, or deserve the win. But I think the goal stands as my goal. Uh, it's a long story. That like, if you know the rules, you know what. Like it was basically the keeper came out and he was on the line. And if you're a keeper and out and out for players in goal and you're out of goal. That counts as a two-on-one, and that means I get a free kick. But as this was denying a goal-scoring opportunity, because I shot towards goal, and the keeper was within... If both those players are within five metres of me, it's a two-on-one and I get a free kick. Or in this case, he would have got sent off, because he's denying a, a goal-scoring opportunity by cut, infringing the the, the two-on-one rule. I mean, like going within the five-metre radius. Um, so yeah, and that went in, and that was a 
the one nil goal, the one one goal that won that game. It was a one nil, and um, you know all the other games we kind of scored a few more, um, but that game was more difficult because we were all a bit tired. And the longer it went on, we thought it was going to be a draw, you know. And our coach kept saying, you know, don't get greedy, don't get too obsessed with getting that goal, and keep rushing and trying to get it. Just relax, play your game, and the goal will come. It doesn't matter who scores it, you know. As selfish as we all get sometimes, we have to play as a team, and we are a team. And we played, that's the thing, we did well. We were unselfish as teammates. And one of my mates, uh, unfortunately, he couldn't play two of the games Saturday because basically he's got a handle on his chair. It's like, it's like a um, plastic bag, kind of like, specially made to like cover your hand. And there's a system that, like, hot air comes out from your controller and keeps your hand warm while you're playing. Because a lot of us, with this condition or similar conditions, um, struggle when our hands are cold or limbs are cold, you know, in terms of movement and stuff. So they have these hand warmers. And his one, unfortunately, kind of stopped working, packed up. Well, the plastic burnt. Burnt through the plastic and kind of messed up the whole thing. So he couldn't use his hand warmer so, like, he couldn't really play. Um, so that was annoying for him and all of us in that sense. But we get on with it, you know, and, th and then, uh, of course, the Sunday's a different day altogether. But, of course, Saturday night, get back to the hotel, meet up with my brother, who didn't come up with me on the Saturday morning like he normally does. Normally my brother takes me. But it was my dad's turn because my brother was on call for work. Like, with the job he does, it's like, like f fire alarms and, like, alarm systems and all that I'm probably saying the wrong thing but like yeah he does that sort of thing at, at his job anyway like alarm systems and stuff and whatever anyway he was called out to a job in guess where Nottingham uh, like a cinema in Nottingham okay fine that's that's perfect so he phones us when, when you're on the road you know yeah I'm gonna be I'm gonna be meeting you at the hotel tonight because I'm in Nottingham anyway for work I was like gobsmacked I was like what are the chances did they know? No, they they didn't. That's the thing. Like, how did they know? And it's just so weird. And of course, that was before we knew about any of this storm that was coming. Maybe I should have checked the weather. Like, I feel like other people knew and we didn't know. Or care. So focused on this weekend. Building up to it for a while. And before it, you kind of get a bit anxious. And dread the whole journey and all that. Once you get there and you're on the pitch, it's fine. It's just... I don't sleep well ever on a Saturday night when I get there I never sleep well I, I, you probably have similar things if you're in a bed that's not yours you know you don't sleep <laughs> I'm telling you most of you have probably had the same thing in a hotel bed you won't sleep properly and with me it's more about comfort because I got like a special mattress that's extra soft I can't remember what they're called tampon mattress or whatever those expensive ones anyway and obviously hotels don't have that. And it's bring an array of cush like cushions to get try and get comfortable. But yeah, it never works. Despite drinking before to try and like put me out cold. So I sleep through no matter what. But yeah, I had a few celebratory drinks with my dad and my brother, of course. Lads, lads on tour. Uh freedom. Without my mum going up this weekend, it was just the lads. And my dad's never been up, haven't, hasn't, I don't know about never, but he hasn't been up on a Saturday in a while. So he was involved in all the banter, because normally he gets there on a Sunday and all the half the banter he's missed. So he doesn't know what's the banter and all that. So this time he had a lot of fun as well. But it was blimmin' windy out there. And you saw the weather, you saw the weekend's news reports, and maybe you suffered somehow from the wind or the rain or the floods. Storm Chiara, I think it is. Then we've got Storm Dominic on the way. How many storms, man? But apparently they they alphabetically number these storms, name these storms. So that next one's Dominic, after that be E, Eric or something, and so on. Um, but, yeah, I don't, I don't know who came up with that idea. Naming storms. It's pretty simple, though. And, um, so yeah. Few drinks, celebratory drinks, food, 
I stay at a different hotel to my teammates, which is about to change in the near future. Probably for the new season. So, that's like September. September time, I'm thinking, hoping. We'll see. Uh, but yeah, because we've stayed in the Radisson for years. Because um, we had a, a discount, which will be up next year. So we might go back to the Holiday Inn where everyone else stays. And just be more part of the team. Because I feel like left... It's kind of... Well, it's not... It's not like my fault, but like, I feel like left out. Like, obviously, if we were there, we'd be all together, innit? More of a team atmosphere. Obviously, I'm very close to my teammates anyway. Um, but yeah, it was just from before when I was with my other team pre-2017 so that was like that time and they all stayed at a different hotel my, my former team stayed at a different hotel anyway which was further away so I stayed at the Radisson and one of my teammates that I play with now was already staying there and a few others but uh, there's no point anymore most of my team were at the other hotel and then at least we don't we don't have to move from our hotel to go and meet them. Just can drink together. So yeah, I probably shouldn't have drunk that much, considering I was playing Sunday. But nothing could stop us the form we were in. Like it was such a great day. Like we could have taken that there and gone home. Those three wins, and I had two goals. I was happy with that. And maybe that's the reason I didn't score any more. But um, yeah, happy with two. Yeah, because I got few more on the Sunday. So yeah, Sunday was crazy. I've got to tell you a story uh, about this hotel. Basically, there's some like panels on the roof that were like flying off the roof, literally. Because basically there's a bar on the downstairs floor like where you go, go through to breakfast in this hotel. And there's like a glass roof. So like, where the bar is above is like glass and it's like a roof. And then next to it is like the, the rest of the building, like like, so one side is glass, one side is normal roof. Like where the seating area is, opposite the bar. So we're there, me and my dad getting ready to to brave the storm and the wind and the rain. And all of a sudden you hear this huge bang. And the guy at the bar is looking up and going, just casually going, oh, there's some panels falling off the roof. But they won't smash through the grass. Don't worry. I was like, okay. Me and my dad are like, shit, let's get out of here. Don't want to die in Nottingham on a Sunday morning. Got two more games to play, come on. What is this? Do you want to get injured? Obviously nothing happened in the end, but it's like scary. And all the staff were so calm. I guess they have to be to keep everyone else calm. But I would have been like, Fuck. you know what I mean? I'd be like, okay, don't panic. Silently having a, like a small panic attack. <laughs> uh, jokes, but not at the time. We were like, shit. People were like laughing about it, like nah. No, and then to brave the storm, literally go outside, just my hair completely ruined. Completely ruined, like wind do your worst, and then just like whoa, when you go outside, just you know what I'm saying? It's crazy. People flying all over the place in that wind. Like the amount of memes that there's been. Unbelievable. But yeah, I don't know what happened to my PS4 just now. All the voice activation came up. Probably because I left my headset still on. But yeah, so it was crazy windy and we got there in the end. Safely, Sunday morning. Got there to find out someone's chair had actually caught fire. Uh, my teammates and some of my mates are already there. Some other teams were saying how like, I don't know exactly what they were doing to the chair. But the fan was still on. It's like a fan is like on a separate motor. Switch it on and it cools the motor, cools the batteries or the motor or whatever of the chair to keep it moving without overheating. And it wasn't turned off. So they're fiddling with the wires of the chair, up, goes up in flames, catches fire, or the underneath does. And whoever's in the chair has got to be taken out of the chair straight away. The chair cannot be used anymore. It's ruined. And it's a new chair from like November. So that was that was a crazy way to start the day. With this wind and rain, panels falling out windows and chairs catching fire. What more could you ask for? 
from a crazy point of view and then crazy enough continued on the pitch but in a good way because I think we won the first game I can't even remember who we played I think Nottingham or something or Notts County whatever they're called another team we've changed their name recently I played them and it must have been I don't know I can't remember 4-0 for what 3 3 I don't know we didn't concede I know that and that was a good game some good goals teammate of mine scored two lovely goals and he doesn't normally score many well done Mitchell by the way that was some calm finishing and we're like Mitch are you alright Jesus that's not normal you know are you feeling alright mate what, what did you have for breakfast you know all this because <laughs> there were some calm finishes and I got a few TikToks of some of the goals and my goal from Saturday which was nice a nice little goal that my teammate tried to nick which I forgot to mention like someone's always trying to nick your goals and of course yeah so we won that game um, pre pretty convincingly as well uh, really realising we're in top form but of course before the game the coach was saying you know yesterday's gone it's a new day teams yeah maybe they win one game and they're up on confidence the next game you don't know what you're going to get good or bad you know from other teams so it continued uh, the run continued into the last game which was a crazy game considering one of our players took out the ref completely by mistake he was fine but he did have a nasty he was going to have a nasty bruise in his leg he went flying over the ref poor guy and then carried on refing the game that is bravery if I've ever seen it but anyway, that game started off pretty bad because we conceded pretty early. They pressed us high. They moved the ball well, West Brom or Dudley as they're called. Because they're one of the West Brom like filter teams from their club, but like with a different name. And their coach is an England player and played for the first West Brom team in the Premiership. So I played against him myself many times. Um, and he is a good coach, don't get me wrong. But on this day we had the beating of them because they on the first day of the season I was playing in goal and they beat us 3-1 where the first goal was my mistake because I was not marking the post and they scored in the post between the post and me so it was an improvement from that 3-1 loss um, so yeah we, we go 1-0 down and then within like maybe 5 minutes we get a goal back uh, it was like wasn't the best of goal it was a good goal in terms of the timing because it put us right back in the game. Because I was thinking capitulation. Like we conceded one. You know trying to keep a clean sheet. It's gone at this point. I was like that's gone. Considering all the other games. So we were like okay. Myself I didn't know. I didn't know if we were going to get back in it. But my teammate sure did. Well done to Dan with that goal. Because it was like from our high pressure. We got the goal. And then the game goes on a bit. Sub two subs. And just before half time, yeah, it was just before, like 30 seconds. Um, the thing with the ref, where my teammate swung around to clear the ball and knocks the ref who goes flying over. And literally, I think it was more of shock than anything. So, you know, people trying to make sure he's okay, not hurt. Continues the game for 30 seconds. And then it's half time and he stops for half time. Because we thought, okay, stop it there. It's only 30 seconds to half time. You can stop the game. And then stop the first half and then carry on in the second half at the time on or something but no he, he wanted to be professional despite whatever pain he was in or whatever he did the last 30 seconds and then stopped the game for half time then half time in you know, a team talk we we done better towards the end of that half was the main message and we're still in this and you know they're going to go hard but we've got to go harder that's it that's simple I think I was off at the beginning of the second half. I can't remember. Maybe I was on and then it swapped. Um, but yeah, then we got a penalty. A penalty? No. We got a free kick. And I think it was a direct one. Where like, it's on the edge of the box. And basically you got to shoot. And the keeper is on the line. And the other defender can't move but no nearer than five metres. Like, like any situation. So Reese, who's playing in the middle for us. Did a great job this weekend. 
he steps up to take the penalty um, because normally the guy in the middle takes a free kicks anyway and like yeah I, I don't know actually know how we decide that but yeah so yeah he's up for taking it well it's a free kick it's not a penalty so yeah the guy in the middle takes it if it was a penalty it would be different but from where I was it looked like a penalty I was on the bench and oh my god the phone oh my days so guys yeah before I was interrupted by a phone call well, actually, I got to tell you about that phone call, because my mum just phoned me, and there's um, some tickets going for Post Malone in the summer in Hyde Park, second of July, I think. So Post Malone, here I come, Posty, what a legend! I'm so gassed for that. Just hearing that now, just hopefully my brother can sort of work out so he can take me, because that's gonna be lit. Post Malone, I was thinking what concert I'm gonna see this year, because you know the concerts I've been to like recently. Anyway, I was at the uh, the Jeezy one. MGK was the most recent one. But I haven't been yet this year. So that's going to be sick in the summer. Can't wait for that. I'm probably going to forget and then re-get excited about it. Like two months, three months from now. And then like literally before. That's going to be a sick vlog. Copyright strike though. I'm vlogging anyway. I don't care. It's going to be mental. Old Posty. And he might bring 21 Savage. You never know. There's a special guest. When he sings Rockstar. But anyway, back to Padre football. I'm so gassed though. I'm gassed like the way I was this weekend. Like it was another level of, of football. Um, to win five in a row, guys. Anyway, that's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the last game. So we so I'll paint the scene, paint the picture again. So half time's just gone. Uh, the ref's just been almost mangled and somehow survived. <laughs> and he's okay now. Uh, Mitchell who did the damage is kind of laughing it off and so is the ref kind of um, oh yeah no but probably legit panic at some point like he was going to get run going to get run over or something anyway second half we get a free I really well, I already said that we get a free kick yeah free kick right right in the middle edge of the box Reese who's playing in the middle scores it simple it's two one we go mental. Like, I knew that was going to be a goal. Like, when it direct free kick, goal. And sitting on the touchline, on the, on the bench with my dad and, one of, and my good teammate, our captain, Ryan, uh, we're just like, this has got to be a goal. I'm going to go mental. I'm going to, I'm going to literally do a Jose Mourinho down the touchline against United <laughs> for Porto. Uh, but yeah, I kind of went mental, yeah. We all did, obviously. Because that meant we're back in the lead. Like, you know, revenge, not revenge, but like a team that's beating you when you beat them, it's satisfying. And the way we were going that weekend is like nothing could stop us. And there's bound to be games in the future where we, or weekends where we don't win all. But if we can win like that in a game like that, you know what? We could beat anyone. On a day, we can. And teams, I think, are starting to slightly fear us again. Like, say, oh, they're a good team. Like, not maybe last year, towards the beginning of last season. Or even the season before they were saying that. Like we were a formidable team. And I feel like we're back on that level. And myself as a player I feel a lot more conf as confident as I did when I first rejoined this team. In 2017 that season was pretty cool. Because the first thing I did was come off the bench and get an assist. Do you know what I mean? So more of the same please. And we're feeling like that again. And when I was, certainly when I was at the team before I never felt this this good on the pitch maybe I didn't get much playing time but yeah I didn't feel this confident and I've kind of re since I've been at this team I've kind of rediscovered my ability as a player and have, having considered what I learned as well in the other team I've, I've brought it here and I've implemented that knowledge and at times I, I felt I was forgetting it slowly so, but no it's still there it's always there I haven't lost it as old as a player I am. I've been playing for what? Since 20, 2007. That's a long time. It's 13, 14 years. 15 years could be. Jeez, it's 2020 now. So I've got that 2020 vision this season. So we're unbeaten in all competitions so far. And 5 from 5 in the league means 15 points. So we went from 8th to 4th. But yeah, I'm just so grateful 
to our teammates with the way they, they, they played and everyone who coached us the, the way the, the team was run was good the rolling subs is a good thing um, not if you're in form because it means you might miss a few minutes here and there but everyone was on form so it was a really difficult choice for, our, for Lee and the coach to decide who was starting and who wasn't because everyone could have done a good job wherever they played some players out of position but still worked hard and proved they deserved to be there I'm not saying we didn't but you know and the younger players are gelling in the team well we're getting used to their style of play they're getting used to our style of play and the advice we're giving them and tell you what I learned from them too you, not necessarily ability but like the bravery of things they do on a pitch the fearlessness of like I'm going to try that if it doesn't work it doesn't matter I'll try again or try something different you know and I still felt there's things we could have improved and we can only get better but there might be weekends where we feel even better and then score more goals and then maybe lose one of the games but five from five I don't understand that's not that's not an everyday thing in normal football that's not an everyday thing like, I'm a Tottenham fan I can't remember the last time we won five in five five from five and when I'm beaten in seven I don't know I don't know, maybe I'm, I'm wrong. But not recently. Not with Mourinho or Poch. Maybe with Poch. But I, it feels like it was a, an eternity ago. But yeah, so driving back home was just bliss. Scary, but bliss. Because we took a different route, we followed my teammate. The same one who took out the ref. Him and his care, they, were, they took the A1 route. Because the M1, going northbound on the M1, there was a lorry on its side. Which my brother saw in the morning as he drove back down to London from Nottingham because he didn't, he didn't want to stay and watch me play annoyingly well he's bad luck I think I think the reason why we won is because he weren't there because he is bad luck little bro he's like always moaning oh I don't want to be here oh I'm tired or well, shut up at least your job's freaking paying you at least you get paid for what you do you know what I mean but yeah so he drove back and he saw that on the M1 so he's like yeah don't take the M1 it's a bit windy a bit dangerous bit dangerous so we took the A1 and it was still really windy and just a weird journey like nice route to be honest but yeah I was just so gassed and we won still couldn't get over it still now I, I'm thinking about it it's like oh my days and I was on the phone to one of my good teammates uh, the one who couldn't be there because um, his dad wasn't too well unfortunately so I was chatting to him and just explaining all these things he's like what a crazy weekend uh, you know, he was really happy, despite him not being there. He was apologetic; he couldn't be there. But you know, when family family comes up, but family first. That's what I say. No matter what's going on in Pacha football or not, you know, he was saying you might not be at training next week, but the rest of us will. And we when, said, whenever you're ready to come back, come back. Whatever's best for your family, you know. Um, everyone's different. So yeah, that's the main gossip on that but it's just unreal uh, other coaches other teams saying well done you're really playing well to all of you and personally to me in some cases which is really like inspiring not inspiring but like it makes you feel good inside you know because sometimes you just feel like you're not doing anything right and that's the time when you've got to try harder and believe you still believe you've got that talent of when you, what you are like on a good day on the pitch or in life you know believe you've got that ability you know don't put yourself down and say I'm not as good as I used to be you've got to adapt your game and I have because physically it's more difficult than it used to be physically some things are different but the brain the footballing brain is still there and the ideas are there and you've got to work around what's physically difficult in your head mentally and then there's always a way around it and a different approach um, which you, you use, you know, you, you um, what is it? You work out which part of the chair to use more, which is your strength and what's your weakness. But the problem is, like, um, it's just, you know, keeping focus. I don't know. I keep focus, but it's like when you're not doing well, you can't, you can't quite get into your zone. And you, something, I don't know, it's like a mental thing when you know you're not playing well. But that's when you've got to just work hard 
try and do the simple things. Don't do anything fancy. I mean, when you're on the form, when you're feeling confident, you can do anything with that ball. Um, and I look at the way I play sometimes, I'm like, really, was that me? Or I look at previous videos, was that me? Did I do that? Um, yeah, and you just remember, yeah, well, playing for that many years, how can I forget what I've learned? And, I don't know, the younger players kind of reinvigorate your passion for the game. They show you, that, like, you know, that you can be fearless, you know, there's nothing to be fearful. If you make a mistake, don't be worried about it. And we try and improve their game and teach them new things. And even them just watching us, they learn. They learn a lot. And as a team, we're really close at the moment. I haven't always felt that with other teams and stuff. It's a good unit we've got. And, of course, um, we played a bit of FIFA up there. Because it's a uni, so we go to this like uni um, on campus. They've got like, a restaurant, bar, cafe, whatever you call it. And they've got a PlayStation in there. So we banged out a bit of FIFA. Beat one of my younger teammates, like 5-1 on the Saturday. Then come Sunday, me and one of my other older mates in the team, it was us against him, against Dan, and we lost. So, and Dan beat us like 7-1. I was like, mate, what are you on? Like, yeah, you, 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 on Sun Saturday, he was like, yeah, I, I'm used to Xbox. I'm not that good on PS4. Then suddenly just batters me and my mate on FIFA. Like, 2v1. Like, come on, man. I thought I was teaching this kid a lesson. But yeah, that, that, that was bants, that was. That was just another level of of jokes. <laughs> we're like, well, we're not playing that bad on the pitch, for sure. <laughs> if it was on the pitch, we just bat, you know, be a different story. And, of course, Sunday, going to that particular calf from the, the, actual ven the actual hall, sports hall was like, a nightmare in that rain and wind. We literally got caught in some of the rain as the storm was starting. And in the on the campus there's like a a marquee made of scaffolding and stuff. And I was so scared that legit if a piece of scaffolding came off, it was gonna be paranormal activity out there. Like in that wind yes yeah, I wrecked a marquee, yeah. Wait, did I say that word? Let's build a marquee. <laughs> Can't say that other word. Did I erect a marquee? can't say that it makes sense but you, no I wouldn't say that build a marquee like, why would you build a marquee in that storm you know that storm's coming but me and my dad, dad were like nah I, my dad was like it won't last and I was like yeah it probably will he was like yeah look at the weather yeah it's big storms coming in I, I was a bit in doubt as well and then we realised okay this storm is here to stay the amount of rain that came down in, in the space of a few hours and the wind was pretty scary as well you get the rain hitting the roof of the thing. Proper, like, storm. It's like, is it the beast from the east? Beast from the east we had last year. I don't know if this came from the east, but it was a beast of a storm. Floods everywhere, it's not even funny. Great weekend to play Pouchy football. All this combination of things made a, a wonderful, crazy weekend. And my dad said he never had more, hasn't had more fun than that in a long time. In Nottingham, you know. Uh, the whole weekend is just great. A lot of banter. A few drinks here and there. A bit, to be honest, I hadn't had a drink for a long time. So when I got up there, I was have a nice drink, or two or three. And yeah, the journey back is just satisfaction. Just the banter on the group chats and stuff of our team, and just posting like little clips on the weekend, seeing everyone's Facebook posts about how amazed they were, how we played, how grateful they were. And it was great to see our coach, like one of my, some of my coaches, like, uh, what's it called, like, Facebook post, saying how like he was really amazed at how we played. Um, and I got a personal text from him as well, saying he was really amazed. And it's like how, how I got my old spark back. Um, you know, in my eyes, I never lost it, but I knew what he meant by that, you know, like playing at my best, actually happy with how I'm playing not coming home miserable or me and my dad arguing about what I could have done better or what, what I did bad, you know. It was it was different. And there's a rule that my granddad started or a thing that he did where he like gives me a fiver 
for every goal I score. I scored two, so that's a tenner. It's going to be poor at this rate if we keep playing on this level of skill and creativeness. And my teammates are oh, friggin' hell. I'll let that stop ringing and then I'll talk again. Ah, oh, guys. What a busy day, eh? Just confirming the uh, Post Malone tickets my mum was. Um, yeah, the phone doesn't, hasn't rung that much on the podcast in a while. I mean, I just edit it out, but I don't care. Like, this is a real, this is realism right here. And yeah, so just, this weekend was just crazy and getting that text, like I said, uh, from my coach saying how amazing it was the way I played. Um, it just meant a lot. You know, when you say great, great team effort, but when you get an individual thing like that, like I did from a few other coaches, you know, it feels good. Um, obviously, you don't, it's not like people say bad things when you play bad, but you know, it makes you realise, okay, I'm playing well at this point. And it's just surreal. Keep saying it, five wins out of five. Like, 15 points, so fourth now behind a few other teams, obviously three teams. Um, top three get promoted. See, top two go straight up to the Premiership. Third place is in the playoff with other team with like other place teams. So we might be in the yeah. Are we in the playoff? We might be in the playoff as well. No, third place. Yeah, third place guarantees playoff. Yeah, I, I should know. I should know properly. But yeah, then you got to play other teams to get through to make sure you get promoted. And last year, the team that beat us in that playoff. Or well, the playoff semi to get to the final, to play the game to get you promoted. So the game before that, that would have enabled us to play for promotion, was against Norwich and we lost. So this season it was like sweet revenge to beat them in regionals and nationals, much to their annoyance. But that's the game I missed annoyingly on the, on the Saturday morning. But yeah, we did what we could and we did amazing. Like what well, the, the the way I just turned up. Just rolled up late, missing one game Saturday and scored two goals. Just casual, in it, you know? Those are just jokes. People couldn't get their head around it. And then, oh, I forgot the other thing. There was, like, a, a basketball net, wasn't there? Like, a training one, not a proper basketball height net that a lot of the, our coaches and some of the parents, such carers, were all jumping up and touching the the thing. Like, the, when you do a slam dunk, they were jumping up and touching it. But my dad was trying to jump and reach it, but he couldn't. Like, and he's, yeah, some of them are as short as him. I don't know, actually. But yeah, I was like, you know, he was like, oh, I'm not jumping high enough. No, he's just short, mate. So we had proper banter him trying to reach this net. I was like, if we score, you've got to jump for that net. But nah, <laughs> that was crazy if you'd seen it. Like, I swear, I was like, Dad, you're going to roll your ankle at some point. Because everyone did it like five times, he couldn't do it. I don't know if it was the technique he was using to jump, but... He can't play basketball, let's just say that. Way too short. There's just so many things. On and off the pitch. Not just the way he played. Team effort, you know what I'm saying? And we're the same. And training this week, this weekend, is going to be lit. And, yeah, I mean, I already made a video about this, so if you, if you check that out, it's like more, more of the same, really. So I don't know why you'd watch that, but that's coming out before this. So you're probably going to go and watch that and then watch this anyway. Which is more, this is like the more detailed description, explanation, whatever you want to call it. Story. <laughs> um, so yeah. And of course, as you know, I'm going to Post Malone in the summer. Concert, I can't wait for that. And yeah, some of the goals I did upload to TikTok, which I'm getting used to using a bit more and I've been like like I said I was watching a lot of David Dobrik vlog vlogs and Jason Nash if you're there the vlog squad if you like different style of vlogging which I've been trying to aim for more like more quick and like I don't make fake jokes and then make people fake laugh and all that because I'm not on that level of David Dobrik I prefer more real stuff but having said that um, you know I like this the style that he uses, like quick and like next bit quick, next scene, you know, twenty seconds here, thirty seconds here, minute here, not too much of 
your own face on the screen. It's a reaction of others and stuff. Which is hard to get when you don't always have a vlog squad around you, you know. Got my brother and a few mates and stuff and I friends here and there, you know. Oh, it's just me. But in the summer I do vlogs really well. I've kind of forgotten how I did them, but I've done some good ones. Like thoughtful ones with like a subject and a and a meaning and like a story and the beginning, middle and end. And some just random that day what's going on. Um, which varies. I mean, some of these big YouTubers they've got so many things going on that they vlog all these events and things they go to. I'm not that lucky yet. Um, but yeah, a few of mates of mine at football. My mate uh, Kai, he, he does blogs, not vlogs. Um, so it's a similar kind of thing. Voicing your opinion about different things. Another friend of mine does gaming videos. He used to play within our club, moved to another team. Um, but yeah, we all still talk. Keep in touch with him, not in them. Things like that, you know, Facebook, whatever. Um, and yeah, I got talking and he was like, well, how's your YouTube channel? I was like, yeah, a bit slow at the moment, but you know. Um, but he know he knows what I'm saying about that. Any uh, anyone I know who's on YouTube, they're not YouTubers. I would say, well, I'm I'm a YouTuber. I wouldn't class myself as like a YouTuber if you know what I'm saying. Like the famous ones, like the ones that make money from this. Um, but yeah, I got another friend of mine, another friend of my brother's, who who, who does gaming as well. Um, that's why I've gone into the game because I've seen the way they do it, and it seems pretty straightforward. If you like my gaming videos. You might not, the live streams are too long. I admit that, but sometimes it's just laziness. And the more subscribers you get, the more you can. Sometimes just be a bit lazy because they just watch anyway. Like PewDiePie, look at his videos. Some of them are just so effortless, but it'll just make them and, and get loads of views. Regardless. So I love that style where you can just put whatever out and people watch it. Like, because they want to see your content. It's like David Dobrik, anything involving him, I seem to be watching now. All their videos, I'm addicted, I would say. And I do actually have a laugh watching them. And so does my brother, funny enough. And we find it difficult to, like... Apart from normal banter, like, here and there, we don't really relate to each other in any other way. Maybe because we like similar films. I don't know, but when it comes to what I watch on YouTube, he's never liked any of it. Maybe Logan Paul stuff here and there. But, like, he's like, stop watching this rubbish, all this. It is rubbish, it's garbage for your brain. But it's funny garbage. And we have a laugh watching David Dobrik vlogs. Um, I kind of get ideas too. I'm not as crazy, he's more of a Austin Kutcher, like that prank show Austin Kutcher used to do. I can't remember what it was called. Prank something, I don't know. Anyway, it used to be like a prank show. And yeah, you just get in all sorts of... Uh, funny situations and I feel like I feel like David Dobrik does that looks a bit like him too acts a bit like him pranked it was called was it called pranked something like that anyway it was it was on MTV back in the day and yeah or jackass like a group of friends doing crazy stuff but more more of David's stuff is just jokes that are set up you know jokes that are like pre-written or he tells them what to say sometimes but some of them are just pure funny purely funny people you know um, and I'm learning a lot from that and of course you've got the uh, hopefully we've got the don't know when but there's a Jake Paul KSI fight long time from that not quite yet this year probably proper end of the year I reckon like November time Jake says, oh yeah, definitely this year, I don't know. That means KSI has to start bulking season once again. But yeah, if you're not interested in YouTube boxing, that won't mean anything to you. Um, and like I was saying, I was talking a lot about uh, Kobe Bryant recently, obviously. Terrible, terrible to find out the news when... when what happened happened and that was pretty sad and I watched a podcast True Geordie's podcast all about the whole situation him and, him and his uh, wingman Lawrence Lawrence who's a big NBA fan Kobe fan was pretty torn up obviously a lot of us were a good friend of mine was 
one of my teammates. He was a big basketball fan. And had a few Kobe posters and stuff. And so, yeah, I was watching this podcast and they mentioned this, um, it's like a documentary Spike Lee made in 2008 about Kobe and one of his games for the Lakers where Kobe, like, explains what he's thinking in the moments, like, of that game, and the pre-game, post-game, half-time, all that, you know, his thinking, his, his, his logic and his, like, jokes and banter in between. I was watching that, really learning about the guy. I, I knew of him, I knew how great he was, obviously everyone did, even outside the sport. Uh, you know, I knew who Michael Jordan was and what he meant to the sport too. And how Kobe was like, I'd like learned a lot from him and idolised him. And like LeBron James, I knew who idolised uh, Kobe. And the day before um, Kobe died, he... Um, LeBron equaled the scoring record of Kobe the day before, of, of all days, in Philadelphia, where Kobe was from. And yeah, the most interesting thing, going back to this documentary I learned, is that he speaks really fluent Italian. I'd learned that after his death as well, because he lived in Italy for a few years. Um, so he spoke quite good Italian. So he had different teammates from different countries and always learned languages to communicate with them and of course Italian he already knew so he would speak Italian to some of the players that understood Italian uh, one of his teammates pretty sure the guy was Italian or Spanish I don't know but he understood Italian anyway so just the banter they were having and I would learn Slovakian is to communicate with another teammate not not teammate like a, a rival team had a Slovakian player and he learned Slovakian just so he could talk smack on the pitch just wind them up in Slovakian, and have banter, and that, obviously he's a lovable guy anyway, he's done a lot of good things for Kobe, and of course in the past, um, he had a negative rap around, like on his neg- negative uh, news, if you like, something that he didn't do, accused of something that he didn't do, a long time ago, I'm not going to get into it, um, but yeah, so he'd become this figure, and a great dad that he was, and so seeing this documentary showed all of those things and it was like 10 years before and I'm watching this documentary this is maybe Thursday or Friday night before heading up to Nottingham and some of the things he said are just really ringing true and like I'm absorbing it all as advice despite it being a different sport the idea is the same the motivations are the same you know teamwork all that and how he said that if you don't believe in yourself, no one else will. And a lot of other things similar. And like, I really like the way he like mentored teammates. Some of them, some of them didn't appreciate it, but the way he um, <coughs> Jesus, that's a horrible sneeze. Woo! And the way he um, he explained things to them and like was a leader on the pitch. And maybe I'm not captain of my team. But I certainly do lead, and sometimes by example, the way I play and the professionalism maybe. I don't get booked too often, I don't swear at the ref. I certainly don't take out the ref. Well, that was Baxton, but you never know. I can always do that if we're losing a game. But yeah, so Kobe was really influential in what that documentary, watching it when I did. It's called uh, Kobe Doing Work or something doing work or does work doing work and it's like an ESPN documentary you can find it on YouTube I do recommend a watch because it is inspirational and maybe you might get emotional watching it if you're a big Kobe fan uh, so maybe don't watch it just yet because you know, it's still raw and it will be for a long time that wound you know someone so so much more to give and like great father and all that so watching this documentary I'm thinking about all this is what I'm like Jesus, we lost a legend. Like, as much as I knew that already, it's really set it in stone. And I feel about it one way, it's like a cross between, you know, like in England, like the talent of David Beckham and the charisma of Paul Gascoigne mixed in one. You know, that level. So, like, truly a shame. And 
anyway, I was watching this documentary and taking in all this knowledge, and I feel like it helped me this weekend. Everyone was playing well anyway, but I feel like it really helped me. And I feel like whether we were winning or losing, I would have coped with it better, having seen this documentary. I mean, the way he explained winning was so simple and made it look so easy. And we did that this weekend, I don't know. It's strange. Strange, strange weekend. No, not a usual coach. Not the usual weather. Um, difficult times. And we just dominated. <laughs> Much to the annoyance of some of the teams. But everyone was really amazed at the weekend we'd had. And long may it continue, more weekends, as we get better as a unit. And, yeah, thank you Kobe, I guess. Whether that was the reason or not, I don't know. It did give me a different way of thinking about how I play the game. You know, and advice you give your teammates. And how it really helps if you've got players around you as good as you, if not better, on your level, on your page, so that they can understand your playing style and, like, you can understand them and work together to win. Because Kobe was saying, like, that 08-09 team he had was a really good group, group of players. And so he didn't have to do everything and teach them everything and try and score points relentlessly because he had a team who could do that. And he could just more, more like, direct the game. He could direct and explain and do that on the pitch without doing everything himself as he had the great players around him. So it's a team effort that was winning at that point, not just his talent, even though he had a lot of talent. You know, you can't rely on one person's talent all the time. You need a team effort. And I've seen it in Pacha for win teams where the, the guy in the middle just carries the team and you can't be having that. But sometimes it can be that way. When you're suffering, it's the guy in the middle it has got to really absorb that pressure. And the keeper. And both our keepers did amazing. Um, one of them even scoring from goal when he got upfield. <laughs> so, you know, it's great. When you have players that are on that level, I feel like anyone can play anywhere. And it, it's easy, it's not easier. When it's not going so well, just remember to work hard. Um, and Kobe was one for working hard. You know, where maybe... One or two had more talent. He had the brain and the the hard work ethic to, to outdo them. You know, like Ronaldo compared to Messi. Messi has a lot more natural skill. Ronaldo worked on his physicality, his fitness, everything. And he's a beast. And that got him to that level. So he's at that level for a different reason. And Messi, of course, hard work as well. But he had a lot more natural ability. So he's already there, to be honest. And I'm not going to say who's better, I don't know. There's different times where diff where one was and one wasn't as good, and vice versa, but they're both amazing. So, you know, how can you compare? And, yeah. So, part of football, it was, that's it, basically. For now, I'll hopefully vlog next time. I can't vlog from my chair when I'm playing at Nationals, but I can at training so I will do and yeah I hope you've been enjoyed my like theories on passion football and success on the pitch uh, and maybe it help, it's helped for life I don't know but whatever you're doing just like believe that you're capable of doing it like with YouTube I just I was saying, I said I don't feel like a YouTuber but I've got to believe that I am one and a good one if people tell me I am then I am you get the old criticism here and there. But you need that to do better. And yeah, this morning I was making a uh, little FIFA live stream. Don't know how I'm going to edit that. I have no idea. Because the sound on this mic, when the PS4 is in full flight, if you like, sounding like a 747, you cannot hear nothing else. You can probably hear the PS4 now just humming away, even though it's just on in the background. But the minute I start a game up or broadcast it, like do a live stream, it goes crazy. Because I haven't got the technology to use like a graphics card. Probably should. 
So I, what I do is I film the live stream and I use my webcam at the same time and this mic in front of me. But I use the headset just in case the sound on the mic is terrible because it picks up the sound of that PS4. You know, so yeah, I mean, I, when it comes to YouTube, going back to like believing that you're, you're good at what you do, you've got to believe you're the best. Even if you're not at work to make that a reality. If you keep telling yourself you are, you can be. Um, and work towards it, obviously. There's always more, there's always something more you can do. And as humans, we always feel that. It's normal, really. But you've got to believe that you're good at what you're doing. Otherwise, what's the point? Like every time I step on a pitch, stepped on a pitch this weekend, I believe something could happen and I could score or any of my teammates could. And it did happen. And I still want to score more goals, of course. I want to, well, get up that goal tally. I, I, I set up more than I score. And I set up a few this weekend. Maybe not the assist pass, but the pass before and that. And I pride myself on that too. And I feel like every time we score a goal from something you've been involved in, that's a plus. Whether you score individually or not, you know, and that's the difference between Patch of Football and YouTube. YouTube is me and only me trying to make my channel better. But even on the pitch, it's up to you if you want to really make a difference. Even if you're playing bad, you can work hard and make a difference and stop your team losing a game or win the game. You know. But that's it for now. It's a full on Patch of Football vlog podcast. Podcast number 30. We're rolling on with these podcasts. It feels like I've done a lot more, considering how long ago I started. But I've taken breaks here and there, haven't I? I might try and do more regular, but then there'll be less to talk about. Um, but yeah, I'm grateful for, you, for your views and your listens. Um, get more views on the vlogs than these, obviously. Some people can't stay still for this long. I, I can understand that, but... Um, yeah, thank you for your views and listening to what I had to say. And hopefully you take it on board in some way. And RIP Kobe, of course. And long live Poucher Football. All the rest. <laughs> and yeah, I'm probably going to jump on Call of Duty or something. Or FIFA again. Uh, we'll see. But I think that's it for this podcast. Um, I hope you've learned something or thought about got you thinking about something sometimes I feel I should always go in depth more but yeah guys thank you for watching keep doing what you're doing keep loving what you're doing believe you're the best at what you do and you will become the best or you will die trying take it easy guys peace goodbye I am out of here peace